Well, hello friends and followers. I'm still working on the uh, Drake T4X Frankenstein now because I've really kind of mucked it up, but I had to ground a bunch of capacitors on the other side. So I just kind of poked them through the frame here and soldered them to the frame and I soldered the sockets to the frame so that they are grounded well. Doesn't look nice, but hopefully very functional. I'm not going to even buy clips for these things. I'm just going to solder the wires onto the 8032 tubes and call it a day. In fact, I already did that. Then I pulled the tube out because I wanted to access some of the capacitors I poked through here. So, yeah, and I've been using this guy's write-up, which has been pretty nice. He does a good job in explaining what to do here. So I've kind of been following him verbatim, hoping this will work out. And of course, I'll give him credit when I'm done and uh, see if it works. So anyway, I couldn't make these fit in the case. So I sort of bashed the case a bit and put some extended divots in it. This barely makes the cover fit on because the cover for the top hits these, but it might work. So that's how I solved the height problem. Anyway, so I'm, I'm trying to now close in on finishing this thing up. I have all the capacitors installed. I have all the cathode return resistors installed as the guy said to put them in. He said to put in uh, 10 ohm resistors, three of them for tube, and put a little bus bar in here. So the cathode return bus bar. So I did that, hoping this isn't too much resonance. I'll put this on the cathode return or I'll maybe cut this off. I'm guessing it goes to here, one of these here is just soldered on there. So. Yeah, and the uh, band switch wafer, of course, has to still go through here, so I think it'll still fit. I put a bunch of these little .005s on here, and I just ground these right up to the case and soldered them on the top. I didn't even bother. There's really no rim on this socket to solder it to, so I just kind of put them up to the case. I guess that's an effective ground. So I still gotta attach the bias voltage in this thing and I still gotta attach the uh, screen resistors or screen um, voltage. I think the rest of this thing is done. So a few more pins and I think I'm done. We'll see. I'm a little fearful about turning this thing on, but you gotta turn it on sometime. I guess I'm almost there. I just gotta finish up now. I hope this doesn't uh, cause any RF issues, but it's what the guy said to do, put a bus in there. So that's what I did. I, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm not so sure I want to keep this little leg of it. I could maybe chop this off. But, you know, cathode return, what can I say? It, it had some, it had a couple of puny resistors in here for cathode return, which it had these in here, two of these, which seems kind of puny for the cathode return. I don't know. Actually, no, it had some big resistors in here. So I hope this goes well. Okay, yeah, it had these in here too. So what are these? One, five, 15 ohms. Looks like they're about uh, three watts or something. Anyway, I got some more circuit work to do and then it might be time to turn the thing on. I think my other tube is coming in the mailbox today, so I almost don't want to turn this thing on until I really verify I did this right. I don't want to really wreck these tubes or wreck the power supply. Sometimes I'm too hasty. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.